Welcome to Heart Powered Conversations. Today, my guest is Laura Mazada. She is a conscious mentor, Akashic Records channel, and a holistic therapist for tw of 20 years. She's deeply committed to actualizing full self-acceptance through intimacy with your soul. Laura excels at unlocking your sacred medicine in 20, 30 minutes. When I read this line, Laura, I was like, how have I not had a 20 or 30 minute session to watch what you can unlock for me? So I'm, I'm coming for it. And Laura is one of my dear friends. Our paths crossed, I think about three years ago, maybe even four years ago. And although our work shares some similarities, it is different in many ways, but our belief systems, our priorities, you could say, our intentions for life, our the way that we operate in our work, in our relationships, in parenting are very similar. And I am so excited and so honored to have Laura here to talk about her work, to talk about all the amazing spiritual awakening tools and teachings and the wisdom that she holds and the codes that she carries and shares with her clients and with with us with the lucky with the lucky listeners welcome laura welcome thank you so much for having me i am so happy that we get to spend this time together today so the first question i always ask my my interviewees is what does it mean to you to live from the heart? And that may mean you're powered by the heart, whatever that means to you. It may mean powered by the divine, by source, by God, by the intelligence greater than us. And how, how has your life changed since you decided to walk this path as this heart-powered being, heart-powered human in whatever it means to you? Yeah, so I I feel that what it means to me to live from my heart is a combination of of source energy and my human energy. And what this really means to me is being able to live from my heart means that all aspects of myself need to be welcomed in and brought online with love, compassion, grace, patience where I have this really, really gentle witnessing of any part of me that desires to come forward. And as these parts of me show themselves, obviously this is ever unfolding. We're always seeing new versions of ourselves and new layers of ourselves. It's really enfolding that into the knowing that my soul has chosen for me to embody in this lifetime. And so it's this really sacred experience because I, I trust my soul and I trust what my soul chose as my energetic blueprint to walk this path from, you know, zero to 90 or however long I live in this particular life. And so me rejecting any parts of me is really a disrespect of my soul, right? And, and I really desire to be in deep communion and reverence of the choice that my spirit has made, because I know that my soul is simply a fractal of source and really in service of oneness. So, so that's my perspective on that. And in terms of how it has helped my life. I mean, it's completely changed my life. I was very, very ill and I had a ton of anxiety. My confidence was not real good. I was looking for validation and confirmation of who I was outside of me all the time. And now I am, I am deeply anchored in who I am and clear on my, you know what? I don't have a tangible clarity on my vision and I don't want to. I just have a, a feeling of clarity around who I'm becoming and who I'm opening into. And that commitment to like really surrendering to the unknown and trust is what has offered an immense level of liberation in my life. Thank you. That was so beautiful. And one thing when you started talking about how it's both parts, soul, that divine intelligence and the human and the personality and all of that. I kept hearing, it's almost like our souls are sitting there 
watching watching this and going yeah this would be no fun if there was no personality if there was no human <laughs> like it would simply be another experience in the in the ether somewhere somewhere where you didn't come to play play out this full life of full range of emotions and full lessons that you couldn't really learn anywhere else mm -hmm. yeah so even though it mm -hmm. feels messy sometimes it's it's all for us it's all for us. Life is happening for us and not to us. Yeah. And speaking of trust, you mentioned that word. Why is it so hard for us to trust? Why is it so hard for us to surrender to the divine will? Why is it so hard to walk this path, allowing the divine to guide us? Yeah, it's, you know, we're so used to sensation and the tangible here on the planet. And being able to put our faith in something that's unknown is not something that we, you know, it's actually something that we're naturally wired for, but not something that we have become wired for because of all the conditioning, because we've gotten so used to latching onto the evidence, right? Like the tangible evidence that's in our world. And it's like, well, so but but wait, if I'm going to be successful on this planet, I need to be at this level. I need to be have this degree or make this amount of money or know this many of people or have this level of impact and all of this. And really, it's it's about you just being all of who you are. And that is another reason why we shy away from this, because a lot of people are afraid of seeing all that they are. And they're uncomfortable with seeing all that they are because there's there's feelings and there's memories and there's building blocks that that confuse them based on what's happened in this lifetime versus how they feel they really are inside. And it's there's this like duality and this dichotomy that exists inside that's like, I don't know. It 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 leads to a lack of trust in ourselves, a lack of trust in the universe. And and I think some of this is religious programming too, right? Religious programming around, you know, how we're who God is and and how we're supposed to be operating in order to be in alignment and, and being good for God, like almost being in this people pleasing place with God, which is honestly just so silly. And it's that constant judgment of self judgment of circumstances judgment of others and the need to control the circumstances control how we are perceived control everything that is that is probably one of the most popular things that clients come to me with. They say, mm -hmm. how do I release control and surrender a little deeper? How do I allow myself to release the reins and that tight grip? And speaking of surrender, I was just reading this beautiful blog post you wrote titled The Balance of Personal Responsibility and Surrender. And you mentioned one of my favorite books, The Surrender Experiment by Michael Singer. I think I've read all of his books at this point. Mm -hmm. And I think he's just an exceptional human and such a beautiful example to, to, to all of us on how to surrender. And two things from your post, and I I'm actually going to link the post in the show notes because I I feel like everyone needs to go and read it and allow the codes to really to really get in there. One of the things you you share there is your formula, but the other thing that this one line that I well, two lines actually that that I that I read that really stuck with me. One was to just hand over the friction is to dismiss a sacred path of you that is asking to be seen. God doesn't want self-rejection. Let's honor the divine by fully appreciating and accepting all parts of us and inviting divine participation where we don't feel we can hold it all. That was, again, I invite you all to go read this and to sit with this because this was so good. And then the second thing was the this little prayer you wrote god i ask you to reveal all of me in the timing i am ready to integrate and receive it i trust you i trust your divine plan i'm here i'm ready and i'm so excited to receive the next invitation to get closer to you 
being closer to you feels amazing as the biggest, most Im immersive love I've ever known. I know that everything in this 3D reality unfolds from there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And again, I was like, I have to write this on a post-it note and put it on my screen. And thank you for, for sharing all of this and putting, putting these very important nuances in there. And I guess my, my big question is, what does surrender look like to you? And if there is any advice you can give others around tangible, practical advice and vision you can share with the listeners around surrender. Yeah, surrender is, again, an unfolding process, right? And it's so interesting because in my life, you know, I was very sick for many years. And I, when I would have these bouts of illness return, I would ask myself, you know, what, what am I doing wrong? You know, where am I like, where am I, am I eating something wrong? Am I not taking care of myself? But I was, had so much space, was taking so much care of myself. And what, what I realized over a few iterations of these cycles was that I was really being invited to deepen into surrender every time. Right. Because what I was doing was I was gripping onto having to get better. It was like, okay. And when we grip, you know, I'm making a tight fist right now. You can't, the, the, the air can't get through, right. The energy can't flow. And so I was, I was desperate to feel better. I was desperate to be like, 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 this is the thing that's going to save me, right? It's the savior feeling of, I need to be saved. And so then we come at surrender from this place of like, you know what? I'm just going to fine, fine. I, I, this isn't working for me. I'm just going to throw up my hands. This is what I call passive surrender, right? Where it's like, I'm just going to throw up my hands and be like, fine, just God, you lead I'll, I'll wherever I'm meant to go, I'm meant to go. And so you can feel kind of like the vibes around that, right? Versus this act of surrender of, you know what, God? I I'm in full service of your divine plan. Whatever is meant to unfold within this body, within this lifetime, I am willing to offer myself to. You know, I started this with my work in the Akashic Records around ancestral healing right after I got sepsis about eight years ago. And it was very clear to me that I had a lot to clear through my lineage, and so I was, you know, doing all of this ancestral healing and all of that. And that was good. It was helpful and certainly part of my story. But for me, I was like, so many people in my family have died early from heart disease or cancer. And so I felt like it was my responsibility to heal this lineage. And yes, there's something about my path that serves that for sure. But it was still a distraction and focusing on other people rather than focusing on taking full responsibility for my vibration with where I am now and accepting where I'm meant to go, wherever I'm meant to go. And so at that point, it was a, God, I trust you. I trust you. If I am meant to live a very long life with an annoying chronic illness, and that's progress in my family line, I'll take whatever I'm meant to embody to serve the purpose of my lineage, of my mission that you've chosen for my soul. And, and I trust you and I'm willing to offer myself to intimacy with you so that I can hear your guidance more clearly so that I can follow what you are offering me rather than, okay, this makes sense in my mind. So I'm going to do this clearing and this healing and this, whereas yes, that's still helpful, but it's still a distraction from the intimacy with my communication with God. Does that answer your question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that and beyond, that and beyond. The intimacy with the with the divine, with God, the universe, source, creator, goddess, whatever, whatever you want to resonates with you and aligns with your belief system. What does that look like when someone is just entering this world of spiritual mm -hmm. growth, expansion, ascension, whatever, whatever it is. Like if someone comes to you and says, I love what you're saying, how can I implement this? Like, what are some of the things I can do to feel the way that you're describing? Because I want to feel and I want to be where you are. Right. So it's stepwise, right? Like we're, we're not going to dive right into this because it's going to fry your nervous system because your nervous mm -hmm. system isn't used to it. So what I always encourage is, 
it's really about starting to listen to your intuition, right? And people listen to it, receive guidance from their intuition in different ways. Sometimes it's listening to the body. That's usually where I encourage people to begin because it's easier to kind of have discernment with sensations in the body. We all know what sensations in the body feel like, right? And sometimes, you know, people are just getting like a really clear knowing that comes in and they don't know why. And they just start to kind of follow that. But what I'm going to suggest here is something that's most tangible, which is using the body. So it's like, take a, take a weekend day or a day where you have a little bit more space, wake up in the morning and just give yourself an hour, two hours, three hours, maybe even half the day, whatever feels comfortable for your nervous system to just start letting your body tell you exactly what it wants to do with every step. So that means when you open your eyes, what does your body want to do? Ask your body, what do you want to do? Do you want to get up right now? Do you want to brush your teeth? Do you want to have water? Do you want to go for a walk outside? Like, what does your body desire? What kind of clothing does your body desire to wear today? What feels really soothing for the body and activating for the body? Does your body desire to be activated or nourished today, right? And just allow your body to kind of guide you. And an example of this is when I did this one day and I took my dog out and I was taking her out and I thought, you know what? Today's the day where I follow my body, whatever my body wants to do. And so as I was out there taking my dog out, my body said, I want to keep walking. I was like, I guess we're going for a walk. So we went for a walk and then we ran into a neighbor. We have a conversation that sparks an idea in my head. We're coming back. I'm then guided to go into a meditation and a chanting that aligns me with source and brings through a deeper wisdom. I then go live, right? So it's just wild that I wouldn't have gotten to that if I hadn't followed my body and allowed it to take me on a journey. And so I think it's trusting that there is consciousness in the body. And the body is not always the most reliable source of information, but it's a really good place to begin and to start tuning into our, our own wisdom and the sensation that can come alive when we just let go a little bit and allow ourselves to be guided rather than choosing. Do you find that a lot of your clients come to you that want to exist in the higher planes, mental, mental and higher, and reject the body and being in the physical and wanting to stay in the density. Oh, that has been a classic theme lately. Yeah. Classic. I think I've become the expert on this. I got to be honest, because like people come to me and this is the biggest thing, right? I mean, this is where spiritual bypassing can come in, where a lot of the spirituality that I've been seeing in the past few months with people coming to me is like, is like hard up, which is like, great. I'm glad you're getting your heart involved too. Let's bring mm -hmm. it. Right. But the, the lower chakras below that and our body that exists, which includes our gut, which some people would say is our primary brain, not even our secondary mm -hmm. brain, right, is existing from below the heart, right? All that down is just there. And so what's happening is these people are like, I love this and it's I, it makes me feel great. And, and this path is is so beautiful and I can see the value, but I'm spinning and I'm confused and I feel like I'm living two different lives and I don't really know how to bring this into who I am and how I operate on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm like, babe, you need to bring this spirituality into the body. Like we need to ground it into the body all the way down through the tips of your toes so that you can fully actualize the fact that your body is a sacred temple that was designed and chosen by your soul to execute a particular purpose that weaves into your entire spiritual journey on this in this lifetime. And it's it's so beautiful. And when they anchor this in, they're like, wow, Laura, like I had no idea how much more was available to me through the embodiment of the spirituality and the merging of the body consciousness with the higher dimensions. You know, I recently had a a personal experience with this, I started seeing an Ayurveda practitioner. And one of the things he did was to not measure my pulse, but basically sit and hold his hand on my on my wrist and know what my pulse was doing for 20 minutes. And one of the things he said was, your body is running this program where it's literally putting on, it was like five grams of mass density on, like it's trying to put on weight every day. And he said, your hormones, everything's great. Everything's fine, but you're putting on weight. And I was like, yeah, that's why I'm here because I've gained like 15 pounds in the last couple of years. And I don't really, nothing has changed. I don't really understand. 
and and what was made very clear to me was that your body is running this program where it's trying to add density and to ground you because I am I am all vata I am all air and ether and I if I could spend 12 14 18 hours a day channeling and existing in the higher realms oh I would I would oh yeah <laughs> I would and even when I am going for a walk with my dog I try to be present, but it's all suddenly the birds are speaking and the trees are speaking and I am like going somewhere else. So my body was doing that to ground me. And some of the practices that were shared was to one, start your day by getting, getting familiar with your body, like showing that like, Hey, I'm here and patting and massaging or whatever, whatever it is. And it's interesting because I still fight it a lot of the time and I am in my body. I am, but it's, it's that the autopilot thing of wanting to go higher, of wanting to exist on those higher planes that I think many of us are struggling with rewiring that and really bringing into, into the body and into the lower chakras because the lower chakras are our creativity is the sacral it's the womb space it's that's our that's where that comes from our, our foundation chakra. our root chakra our power our center of discernment the solar plexus all of it is so and it's interesting if anyone listening has had the issue of putting on weight and not really understanding why the other thing was when we are eating digesting food it's becoming more conscious of bringing it into the body and lowering it and allowing the body to digest it for fuel and burn the energy instead of the way that I usually eat lunch or something while the kids are at school is, okay, I got to eat lunch and go and work and do all the things and the mental and going up. So it's in a way our bodies, the wisdom of the body is telling us, hey, if you want to have more vitality, if you want to have the the strong lean physique that you not for for any vanity reasons but truly as we are designed to be healthy and lean and strong you got to you got to pay attention to the processes that are going on and not you know reject the physical because yeah and and make space for it Right? Like make, like, yeah. about the digestive process, like making space for the body. Like this is also about deepening trust in your body. Like the body is very porous to energy. It's very open. It's very open to receiving the codes that we're bringing in through this higher consciousness, higher dimensional mm -hmm. work. It's really beautifully on our side for sure. And so it's offering space for that, but also asking yourself if you're having trouble digesting in whatever form, it, it's also because you're not bringing this deeper, this spiritual these spiritual pieces deeper into the body and an opening space for it to have more ability to digest at its own pace, to digest these higher consciousness codes, not just the food you're eating, not just the stuff you're drinking, but these codes you're bringing in at a pace that doesn't feel too rushed, right? And, and giving it space to just like really digest all these codes is going to really soothe and heal and seal your process of of receiving food and, and nourishment as well I think you just unlock something for me because all that happens with me is stuff comes in and in and in and in and in and I empty and I receive more and I receive more and I put it out and I put it out and it's it's like this generator of of all the all the things but it's and I always say, okay, you got to slow down. You got to, you know, close the, put like a mosquito net on the door where it's like, okay, only a little bit allowed. And I think that's my natural protective mechanism that's taking, taking place because there is that deep desire to digest everything and have space and have rest in between digesting it. Right. It's giving yourself integration time because it's, it's really beautiful to be able to receive everything we're receiving, but not all of it is meant to be deeply internalized and digested, right? And so it's it's offering space for your body to be a filter for that as well, right? And, and allow it to serve, allow it to serve, because then your body is going to feel like 
super proud too, you know, that it was able to, to serve and, and offer this, this beautiful gift to you to filter what's coming through. And we're not a factory. We're more like a, a trickling fountain. Oh, <laughs> because that's what it feels okay. like. It's like it's like okay. we bring in the downloads okay. and then we pump them back out, and it's like bring them in, pump it out, bring it in, pump it out. It's like that's like wounded masculine energy, right? Instead, it's like no, like allow it to come as a, in as a trickle, trickling fountain. When you have that awareness, it's like ah, okay, allow this to kind of pool in the third eye and then just drip at its own pace down and just sit there in stillness and just allow it to distribute and give it space and use the breath to move it through the body. And that sensation feels more like what our nervous system desires. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nervous system definitely desires that. I think the big challenge is when you when you have galactic connections and galactic communication and all the things, they're at a different pace. And the information that comes in and the force and the energetics of it, yeah. But I wanted to ask you about Akashic Records because it is not my wheelhouse. I do not go in the records and I would really love for you to educate our listeners about your process, about maybe tell the background story of how you came across working with the records. And one of the things I would like to really highlight is Laura is one of the coaches, mentors, guides for others that has the utmost integrity. Like integrity, when I think of Laura, it's like integrity. So I trust you more than more than anyone I have crossed paths with who says I'm an Akashic reader, Akashic Records reader, to really bring this through and share this work, as well as direct people to work with you. Because I know you, I know your heart, and I know your energy and your integrity. So if you can take the floor, take the mic and talk about your love for the for the Akashic Records and your work around it, I would Absolutely. I would appreciate it. And I know others would too. Sure. And thank you so much for those kind words. I receive them deeply. And it's the deepest honor to receive that from you too. So yes, yeah, so the Akash. Oh goodness, the Akash. It's like my bestie. So I found the Akash. So it was after I got sepsis, I only got so far with the medical community and they told me that I was just going to have to apply for disability and I wasn't going to get any better. I was actually going to keep getting worse pretty steadily. And I just didn't see that for myself. So I became a Reiki master teacher because I started to play with alternative healing modalities. I'm greatly shortening this story, but, but then I had a friend that mentioned the Akashic records to me and I kind of rolled my eyes and I was like, what is this? Like another modality that humans have slapped a name on to try to understand the divine. Right. And I was like, what is this? But it kept calling to me. It kept calling to me. And so I entered the Akashic Records and I started just exposing myself to the frequency of this space. And what I noticed was that when I would be in the records, I would have zero physical symptoms. And then when I closed the records, I'd be super energized. And so I didn't understand any of this yet, but I just knew something was happening. And my husband, who wasn't a believer in any of this, would say to me, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it because it was He's like, you're so much better. You're so much better. I mean, physically I was better. My anxiety went down. My confidence went up. My cognitive clarity was coming back online. Like it was wild to me, but I didn't get it yet. And so I just kind of consistently went in there without really getting anything or knowing what was happening. And just to tune to the frequency because the Akashic records is a higher dimensional frequency. It's a very high level frequency. And so we really want to create a relationship with that space. And there's a couple different ways to do that. I mean, you can literally just be there, do all the practices that you usually do, just open the records first and just hang out in that space because it's going to be like anything you already do, like meditation or Reiki or other practices, even journaling are going to be like they're on steroids when you're in the Akashic records because you're amplifying the frequency, right? And so you can just kind of hang out there, but you can also develop a relationship with that space by connecting to guides or angels or loved ones who have passed on or ascended masters or, you know, any spiritual being that you have felt connected to, you can really just start to create a relationship with them that feels more intimate and start a conversation. You can even create a journal, like a, a journal where you write back and forth with your guides, like you're having a chat because we're used to this in human form. This is how we know how to develop a relationship. And so we bring that same template initially to the Akashic records. 
And sometimes that just means you putting your pen to paper and just starting to write when you get in that space and just letting your hand kind of move and let yourself be guided. And you don't have to get attached to, I'm not hearing anything, I'm not feeling anything, I'm not seeing anything. Because I promise as you continue to attune and open, you will your, your human will start to soften and you will start to receive more messages. And when you're in this space, I really like to call it, it's, it's a spiritual home. And every single one of my, my clients and people that I know that access this space say the same thing. They're like, it just feels like I'm coming home. And that's how I really like to view the Akashic Records, because let's be real, all of the spiritual energy any of us work with, it's all of source, right? Source created all of it. We all just created templates to try to understand the energy. So yes, you can say the Akashic Records are a library in the clouds. Yes, they are. It's the book of your soul. It's like taking the, the book of your soul off the shelf and it has all the information from the time your soul first sparked through past lifetimes, current lifetime, future lifetimes. You can ask questions, you can get information. But I feel like people go into the Akash and this distracts them because they're going in there to satisfy their ego. They're like, well, I wanna know if this guy is gonna ask me out or I wanna know if I'm gonna have the money that I want, right? And it's like, that's not the point of this. The point of this is to get into intimate relationship and to develop a spiritual anchor so that when you you are anchored in the Akashic records in the spiritual home, you feel safely held we already know you're safely held and we anchor you into the earth before we go into the records. So we already know your body's good, but now we're going to anchor your, your essence, right? We're going to anchor your soul, your spirit into the spiritual home in the record so that you're held there by your guides. And from here, you can navigate any dimension you desire. You can navigate any, all of your soul's origin points. You can navigate the galactic guides and galaxies and energies that we've never had access to in a way that feels really, really centered and, and controlled and safe and expansive. And that's not because, oh, we're nervous. It's because when we are anchored, being that we are humans and we chose to be in, incarnated in this lifetime or in any lifetime, when we are anchored and held in human form or spiritual form, the fact is no brainer, we can expand more we can expand wider and we can expand quicker. And that just allows us to align with our divine frequency and the creation energy of the universe more easily, more quickly, so that we can be of greater service here on the planet. And that's really why I love the Akash so much. It's because it's a foundation. It's a spiritual foundation. So can we talk about all the things you can do in the Akashic Records, like ancestral healing, past life healing, inner child healing, galactic codes, like all the things? Yes, I could talk about that for days. That to me is the fun part, right? That's the fun part. That's a creative part of being in the Akash. But the real essence of it is the anchored spiritual relationship that holds you so that you can continue to deepen the integration of source energy, which is the largest energy we could ever even possibly comprehend way beyond our comprehension. And it can be difficult to anchor those codes and hold them and sustain them when we aren't anchored both in the human and in spiritual form. Does that answer your question? Yes. As you are talking about it, the visual that I'm receiving is as you access the records, the all of source, all of all the galaxies, all of universe is, it's as if it's unlocked within your body and your body just turns into, into that instead of the mass and density, it becomes that it, it yeah. allows you to literally be that frequency, which sounds, sounds sort of what you were, <laughs> what you were describing. It does. But the other thing that I really want is really important to point out as you're talking about that is that the other reason why being in the records themselves is so important to anchor as your spiritual home is because you're opening the book of your soul. So if I were to just say, oh, well, I have other places that I feel like are my spiritual home. Okay, I get that. For me, conceptually, I feel like this helps our humans so much. I feel like the Akasha is such a perfect bridge between the spiritual and the human because what it allows you to do is you're opening the book of your soul, which means you're anchored in the home of your soul's story and narrative, which means that you're not just going to open up to all of these galaxies and galactics free form. And that's what scares people when they go to expand their consciousness and when they go to expand their understanding of the universe, and these galactic bigger energies, because it's like, am I going to get lost in space? Like this spaciousness, no matter how ascended you are, 
this spaciousness, when we enter into more spaciousness, our nervous systems have a response because they're wired for survival. And so it's like, wait, you're taking me into even more expansive space, twitch, 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 right? That's how our nervous systems respond. And so when you're just in the book of your soul, you're only going to be opening to the energies that are ready to be integrated for your soul's journey at that moment in time, which is so nourishing and, and comforting and safe and loving. That was when you were talking, I was going to ask you, do you find that you're only given as much as you can handle? And then you answered it and I was like, okay, there we go. Do you find that some of the pitfalls that clients or just in general, general public that, that starts working with the records th that they fall into is becoming so attached to some of the the narratives of past lives and those labels and identities and all 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 the things and almost like there needs to be a preparation before you you have a session with somebody to kind of clear that that lens and before you get cert not certified but before you become trained in going into the records to kind of release more of the conditioning and the ego and the desire to have labels and the desire to have those important bits about this is my story of this life and this is my story of the galactic origin and I am a star seed and I am an indigo and I'm this wow. and I'm that. Yeah, listen, what's your take on that? <laughs> I know you can see you can see my response. Listen, uh -huh. I believe that, I believe that this is one of the 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 purposes that I have to educate people on because because I do feel I I got I got involved in that sensation sensational aspect of spirituality as well, and it's fun and it's cool and it does give you some context and it does give you a deeper understanding of yourself. Don't get me wrong. This it's not like it's not valid helpful information. But I think that people use this to 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 justify who they are and how they operate in this life, to validate who they are, which means they're still kind of looking outside of themselves, right? And they're using these narratives and and people will say, they'll be like, "Well, I can't do that because I had a past life where I was burned at the stake." And so and I'm like, "Dude, come on, man. Like that's not the that's not the idea here, right?" I always say when I do past life work for people, I, I don't do past life readings. I do Akashic Records readings because if a past life is meant to show up and integrate itself and be known by your conscious understanding, it will arrive for you as you attune to the frequency. And that's why I say it's it's really a, it is a process of deconditioning the mind and really dissolving some of those old stories into really bringing them current with the energy you are now and the energies that are coming in so that you can alchemize them from a different level of consciousness. But it's like, you know, being really, being really just present in the energy is what's most important because as you attune, anything you are meant to know is automatically going to arise into your conscious awareness to be integrated. So when we go searching for it, like I have to go find out what my origin point was for my soul. I have to go find out if this is from a past life. I have to go find out you are searching with the mind. You are looking to satisfy the ego. And I'm not telling you it's not going to help you, but it's a band-aid. It is a band-aid. And when this stuff comes forward, I'm very, very particular about not analyzing what comes forward in past lives with the mind and what it means, because we actually slow down the integration of this energy when we try to gain conscious understanding of it. Like just trust that the codes are shifting underneath and that they're going to start rising to the surface and showing up in 3D form when they're meant to express to you. I feel like I need to take a snippet of this and literally post it across every platform because everyone needs to hear this. And do you find that you get people who come to you if they are searching, if they are really trying to dig dig for something? You are they come to you because you are the voice that delivers this message. So that they can finally be like, you know what? I'm actually done searching. I'm done. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. 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 They're exhausted. And they'll say to me, mm -hmm. I always get what I need, but not necessarily what I want from you. And they love it. Right. Mm -hmm. Because they'll come in with a want, a human mm -hmm. want, but they will receive what's deeply nourishing and needed that opens them in a way that they, and that's what I love about the Akashic records. That's what I've always found with the Akashic records is that 
I will go in with, when I used to go in with questions, which I don't anymore, now I just receive and, and, and allow. But when I used to go in with questions, which is what I recommend for people when they're first starting to understand the Akashic records and how they communicate, but go in with questions. And I would like, I'd go in with a question about my son, you know, and like connecting, how can I serve him? What is my role meant to be in this, in this connection with him or whatever? It would end up being something that seemed completely unrelated. And I'd be like, what's this nonsense, right? And it would always be about a deeper knowing and opening of, of very raw aspects of who I was. And I'm like, this seems completely unrelated. And of course it's not. Of course it's never unrelated. Of course it's the actual core depth and, and source of where this question came from in the first place. So I could have had the question answered and that would have satisfied me for a period of time. But that source core would have still been kind of like pulsing and it would have come out in other ways. It would have absolutely come out in other ways. And you maybe would have gone in to get answers for that and right. just would have kept going in loops and loops and loops and never, never ending seeking and searching outside of yourself and not not receiving the wisdom that was coming and not allowing it to be integrated and really honored because it, yeah. yeah we can end up yeah. we can literally end up being in a codependent relationship with the akashic records or with source where it's just yeah. like yeah i'm constantly coming to you for an with questions and answers and questions and answers and questions and answers and it's like babe hold up uh, and god doesn't even want you to outsource your power to it source doesn't yeah. want you to outsource your power to source because source gave you that power inside it wants you to access it within your being and your palpable connection to this energy. I had a very big slap on the on the head with with this exact thing when I was in in Egypt. I connect deeply to all of the gods, the goddesses, the archetypes that existed, which of course they're all galactic, they're all higher consciousness, all par parts of source. But at some point when I was asking for something, they said, stop, you are the boots on the ground. You hold all of our intelligence. Can you just anchor it in your body? And can you act as us from now on? Like no more questions. When you speak, when you, when you, when you speak, you channel us. Can you just allow that to be your operating system? And <laughs> I am still like, okay <laughs> okay <laughs> your body, but like, like, it, but a like, bit. yeah but it's like it's that you know because we still feel like children in some ways we feel oh, like yeah. we're not it's not that we're not worthy but it's like that we're still in training like we still have these training wheels that we we don't want to release fully yeah I did want to ask you something about the Akashic records can you open records for places so for example atlantis does atlantis have a big book <laughs> of its of its history can you do play other places what does what does that absolutely. look like absolutely yeah i actually i love this i think it's a really beautiful practice and i actually really encourage everybody to open the akashic records of mother earth because that's really helpful to really to really feel into and receive the codes of those boots on the ground, you know, your boots yeah. on the ground, your particular walk on the planet. And so that's, what's cool is that when you open the records of Atlantis, yes, you're going to get, you're going to get codes, but you're also going to get information, right? You're going to get information. And this is a really beautiful way of understanding how different galactic civilizations or even civilizations here on the planet have operated, have, we can extract lessons, we can extract wisdom, we can extract love and collaboration and understanding and how they exchange with one another. And it's just, it's a curiosity. And I think that's what's, what's beautiful in expanding our consciousness that way is when we open the records of these different locations on the planet, we're opening up codes that have been placed here in physical form that are, that are again, medicine for us that continue to help us understand not only our soul's journey, but let me tune into this for a second because they're bringing something through around the locations. 
Yeah. It's like anchor points for your soul on the planet, like energetic and, and vibrational anchor points for you on the planet. So that especially when you're in a, a season of doubting or a season of feeling less palpable connection, that you have the ability to connect with these codes without having to travel to the pyramids. If you can't travel to the pyramids without having to travel to Mount Shasta, if you don't want to go to Mount Shasta, right? But like these places that we have access to vibrationally that carry a deep level of sacred medicine and richness. So beautiful. I think everyone listening is going to run to your website and find out when is the next time you're training you're training others and how to read the records and something else that came through when you started talking about the mother earth, the Gaia opening the, the, the records for, for her, I was seeing whales, like the soul group that is the whale consciousness coming in and them literally saying, come work with us. So I don't know if it's for you and me, but it's somebody out there. And then I was seeing my friend who works with the consciousness of the bees the bees are saying, come meet us in the records. We can give you so much more here. Like there's so much more that can, like you said, like on steroids, it's like, it's it's so much more powerful and pure in many ways because to be there, you are required to release the mind, to bypass the mind, to really receive and be in that in that energy. Yeah. And the whale energy has been really big lately. So is the bee energy, but the whale in particular has just been very, and you think about that. I mean, just from a, a 3d perspective, I mean, they're, they're just massive beings. They're massive beings. Right. And, and their energy is exponentially beyond that. And, and they, they travel this entire planet. They roam this entire planet and share such beautiful codes that they even emit out into the universal frequency to communicate mm -hmm. back and forth. It's wild. And so it's really just this, this, honestly evidence that 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 veil has become thinner and thinner between the spiritual world and the earthly world and that we are we're receiving more of and, and rapidly <laughs> these these new earth codes is what people call them right which is really just this this higher vibration this universal love collaborative frequency deeper grace and understanding for one another and and it's coming online much more palpably and much more rapidly now. I'm seeing like this spiral and we're like zooming through the spiral, getting closer, close, closer and closer to, to source, to that point of oneness, to that light at the, at the end of the, the spiral. And I think everyone can agree who's listening right now, whenever you're listening to this, that the energies have been wild and that our bodies are being asked a lot to manage, to hold, to integrate, to release, to process all of it. Yeah. And I don't know if there's any wisdom lately, anything that has been coming through for you that you would like to share with others as, as a tool, as a helpful tidbit of information as a wisdom as I feel like you've been spitting out these quotes and wisdom wisdom things that need to be made into posts and books and <laughs> and all the you know all, all the things for others to really sit with and and take time to integrate but I feel like there's like something else that like mm. that you that you well, have that is waiting to come through as you were talking, and then I'm going to share a quick tool to help people kind of start to bring this into the body. But one of the things that was coming forward as you were talking is this is exactly why the theme for my first retreat this year, I'm hosting two retreats this year. And the theme for my first retreat in May is quantum embodiment. And it's really exactly what you were just saying. It's bringing in the quantum spiral and allowing that activation after we have anchored in our internal divine mother. And so I think it's really important. A, a lot of this divine mother energy has been coming forward lately. And so allowing yourself to receive in any way, shape or form that you can right now, which is receiving nourishment, receiving love, receiving compassion, right? And, and a, really inviting it in, even going out and saying, I am asking for nourishment. I am asking for being held. This concept of being held, whether you feel like Mother Mary is coming down and holding the back of your head and allowing you to rest, whether it's other guides, whether it's source itself, 
or, or whether it's human beings and just saying, I don't, I don't want to speak. I don't want, I, I just want to be held. And I want to be held in a very sacred embrace, like in a very sacred way. Um, and, and as you're doing that, it's going to provide this, this opening of the heart space, but also because right now that's what we're bringing the quantum spiral in through is the heart space. And that's the portal that we're going to be opening in my May retreat is like really anchoring in the divine mother, opening up the heart space and bringing in this quantum spiral to really embody both energies. Like not only all this quantum stuff that's coming in that can overwhelm our field, but also deeply feeling into being our own maternal nourishment right at every layer so that was the first piece that came in which is kind of a little bit more more quantum and metaphysical mm -hmm. right but then the other piece is really one of my favorite techniques for for grounding into the body and allowing the opening of the third eye and the crown and taking and bringing a lightness of being to the physical body itself so that it kind of rises up a little bit to meet this energy is using the alternate nostril breath with a hum on the exhale so how I do this is you hold one side of your nostril and you take a nice deep breath all the way up into the third eye and you pause. Hold the other side of the nostril, hold the other side and exhale out while you hum. Mm -hmm. Breathe back in that same side. Close the other nostril and breathe out and hum. What this does is this activates the paranasal sinuses, which are just above the eyebrows and just under the eyes. And the paranasal sinuses generate nitric oxide, which is naturally generated in the lungs. And so what happens is nitric oxide is a vasodilator, so it expands the blood vessels. So this encourages and expands circulation to and from the heart. So it takes a lot of pressure off of the circulatory system and the heart gets to just slow down a little bit and it gets to not pump as hard because there's more space. And as a result, this, this expanded vessel is also extending into the lungs, right? We have blood vessels everywhere in the lungs. And so you're bringing even more nitric oxide to the lungs, which takes pressure off of the respiratory system and allows you to breathe much lighter. So this breath is something that I used to teach and has come back so much lately as this invitation to lighten the physical body open up the third eye and allow us to really bring this energy into the body. Let the body consciousness be a vehicle for opening and receiving energies so that your body's just more receptive to integrating them and to holding them and actually sustaining them because you're not working so hard. And this is the same comment that we made earlier with the digestive system, right? Like when you're asking yourself, what, what concept am I having trouble digesting? Or what of all these downloads am I having trouble digesting? And what are the foods that are easier to digest or allow my digestive system to just have a nice exhale, right? And these are the kinds of gifts that we can offer to the body that allow this lightness and this opening to be able to receive these energies that are very naturally coming forward. If you're even listening to this conversation, then you're somebody who does have a desire to welcome these energies forward and who is it is open in your field to receiving the energies coming forward. It's going to happen anyway. So let's lighten that in the body and receive these more richly and, and deeply as nourishment. Thank you for that. And I did it with you. And what I, what I was seeing as I was doing that breath was I saw like the blood vessels in my lungs light up and almost like leaves open because to me lungs look like the 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 tree and almost like the flow of oxygen blood and oxygen everything moving and the leaves sprouting and opening so thank you Love thank that. you for sharing for sharing that and it, it was like life is returning that's what like the message was right. life is returning to this part of your body and for some reason I was hearing grief like if somebody is experiencing grief it's it's bringing breathe, bringing that life into the space where we do hold a lot of grief. Mm, I love that. There's been a lot of grief. Yeah. Really in the collective lately with these new energies coming in. And it, and it makes sense because we need space. And so it's, it's clearing the density and, and I recommend with that breath to do it seven to nine times minimum, you know, you seven can do it. Not, I usually do it just intuitively until I feel complete. Mm -hmm. But, but if you want like kind of a, a rubric to begin with, to help your human brain, uh, you know, you can try seven to nine times to begin. 
Thank you. Welcome. Okay, Laura, I wanted to ask you about your books. Oh, yay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I published Holistic Mental Health Volume 1 in October of 2022. And it's a, it's a collaborative book project that invites in 24 authors to write a story about how their lives have changed, opened for the better. We have stories in there about mental health. We have stories in there about physical health because it's all interrelated, right? I I, I even can't stand using the, the term mental health, to be honest with you, because it's all one. It's all the same, right? We're, we're very holistic beings, but being a therapist for 20 years and seeing so many people hit their heads against the wall with modalities that just didn't resonate with them. And it's like, oh, therapy doesn't work for me or something's wrong with me. And people who are deeply devoted and really trying hard, like really, really trying hard and continuing to be in the same cycles, it's it's being able to open their eyes to the wisdom that lies within them and these practices that are so accessible. And so every chapter has a story that you can resonate with. And there's going to be some stories you don't and some stories, some, some stories that you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I feel seen. Like I've so been there, you know? And then each of these experts has a practice that has been life-changing for them that they invite you into to be able to start implementing. And the point is that when you start to have this emotional connection and energetic activation, when you're reading the story, your belief deepens in the fact that you can heal yourself. And you're like, oh, wow, this, this can work. And then you're motivated more to use the practice and the tool in the chapter and, and to kind of mobilize this momentum forward to start healing yourself from within. And so I have holistic mental health too, publishing the second week in April. And I'm telling you, this is the first project I've ever done in my life that is completely and entirely led by source and that my human tantrumed and kicked and screamed and said, I don't want to do it. And I kept, oh, it took me months and months as this was dropping in to really open to it. And it has been the easiest, most expansive, most mind-blowing experience because I didn't lead it at all. Right. I mean, I let it as a relevant being relevant as a human here, but, but I, but I didn't lead it. Right. It was really led by source and the people that came into these projects and that I have met have been the most gorgeous, devoted, heart centered practitioners that are changing lives every single day, every single day. And to have their voices be heard and be seen is deep medicine for the planet. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm so grateful that I allowed my human to soften and open to this call um, because it's honestly just been like a, a total surprise. It's been a total surprise and we're going to head into volume three as well. So I'm excited about that. I feel like we could write one of these every single year and, and, and never run out of things to offer because we're working with the infinite, right? And there's always new ways that we're discovering about how to operate as divinity here on the planet. Thank you. Thank you for bringing it through. Thank you for surrendering to the divine plan. <laughs> Thank you for magnifying the voices because what you said really resonated that we all need. And for each one of us, it's a different person that's going to unlock that something that, that we connect to and that we say, oh, now I can see and I can believe because they did it and I, I have an example and I have this this person I can also reach out to because they are operating in this world of healing and expansion and growth that I can I can learn from and I can work with because we are all really are like that quote goes we are all guiding each other home so it's it's a beautiful yes. way to bring to bring practitioners forward and connect others who are seeking that guidance and that help and that encouragement and so yeah thank and, and you you're welcome and it's so funny that you say that because that's how it originally dropped in was just doing a summit and I do do a summit I did a summit for book one we're doing a summit that's going to roll out a few weeks after book two as well and, and that was originally what Source had put on my heart was that I was meant to connect people. I was meant to connect people to that person that resonates with them, that has that voice that they're like, oh my gosh, somebody finally speaks my language. Mm -hmm. And being like, here, talk to each other, like meet, support each other, collaborate, like receive from someone who, who feels you deeply, right? 
And then, and then the book came forward after that as kind of like this really tangible manual that could feel like, like a security blanket in a way in their pocket to, as like almost a, a resource guide to access when you're feeling lost, you know? And so it's really a beautiful marriage, but yeah, that's what I love. I'm so glad you brought that forward. Cause that was really the whole purpose from the start was to connect people with that person. Cause there's 7 billion people on this planet. If you feel alone and not seen, I promise you there's somebody on this planet who understands you like there is. And so it's being able to extend this web and this network further and further so that we can allow people more access to connect with their people. Connecting soul tribes together. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. So we've mentioned the books. You've mentioned your retreat. Mm. How, what are some of the other ways that people can work with you? Yeah, so I have a couple ongoing programs that run in cycles. I have my Vitality program, which is opening again on June 5th. And that program is really about bringing the spiritual and the higher level consciousness into the body so that you're walking in a more embodied, sustainable divinity. And so you don't have these constant ebbs and flows. We're all going to have ebbs and flows as humans, but we want to make these much more manageable. We want you to become, we want you to come to a space of feeling and mastery of them so that they're less intense. They are less frequent and they last less long so that you can really feel more of an anchoring within. The number one thing people get from this is obviously intuitive expansion, but more deep confidence, like sustainable confidence in who they are. And then I have Akashic Immersion, which is actually starting this week. It's starting in a few days as, at the time of this recording on March 8th. But that one is really a customized way of connecting to the Akashic Records. And again, it's, is it the Akashic records? It's really whatever intuitive connection you have or spiritual connection you have, but we anchor in the records and allow that to be our spiritual home point as we navigate higher dimensions and other levels of consciousness. So that this one's really for you to expand to your next level of spiritual embodiment and your next level of spiritual, next level of consciousness, really next level of, of div divine awareness. And it's fun. This one's like really fun too. They're all fun, but because I'm just a very playful human. So I bring that to all of my healing, but this one's like, what do you want to learn? Where do you want to go? And then I customize the modules and we have a ton of group coaching calls in that program, as well as one-on-one -on -one time. I always have one-on-one -on -one time in my programs, but, but those are my anchor points. And I, and I have a, a bigger, a bigger one that's in the works, but source is still kind of downloading some of those details for me. And, and one-on-one -on -one coaching is always, always available. In the retreats you have this year, are they full already? Do you still have spaces? What do you so have my May coming retreat up? Is full. My May retreat is full and I already have um, a full waiting list as well for 2025, but my September retreat is still enrolling. So we just opened that about a month ago. And this one is around intimacy, really. It's, a, it's around using human relationships as the gateway and catalyst for really embodying your soul's frequency. Because it's realizing that in our interactions with other people, particularly intimate relationships, whether that's a partner, whether that's with a child, right, but just this real emotional intimacy, how the reflections that come from our exchange with humans are truly the key codes that unlock what the messages that our soul is trying to deeply open within us so that it can settle more into our physical form. So I'm really excited about that one too. Yeah. And what's the location of the September one? It's in the Berkshires, Massachusetts. The mountains are my mountains are my jam. I love them. And the Berkshires are super, super magical. And there's so much crystal there that we can uncover as well. So we like to to find crystals on my retreats in the Berkshires as well. And we will link all of these in the in the show notes. Oh my goodness, Laura. This was this was amazing. It is always so, so good to connect with you. I guess I, the last thing I will say, your website, your Instagram, all will be in the notes, but if you could just say them. So in case somebody is, is itching to, to enter them on their phone and give you a follow and all the things, where can they find sure. you? So they can find me on my website, which is the Akashic therapist.com, or you can go to Instagram at emerge healing and wellness. And you can also find me on Facebook under Laura Nat Mazada or under Emerge Healing and Wellness as well. I have a business page there, but I have to be honest, you guys have to visit me on YouTube because I have so much amazing, phenomenal content there. If you want to start getting to know the Akashic Records and how they communicate and how they operate, watch my Akashic Updates playlist, 
watch my beginners video for opening the Akashic records. Like that's really going to be a beaut. You're going to get so much out of those videos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for tuning in and give Laura a follow. And I will probably be seeing you in her next, in one of her next programs that she was telling us about, because she is truly an amazing teacher, an amazing guide, the biggest heart, and with so much integrity and love. Thank you, Laura. Thank you for being here. And thank you for listening.